Welcome back to Learning Image Analysis. My name is Lawrence Small, Application Specialist at MyPAR Image Analysis. The topic for today is Required Materials. We'll talk about three different options you have for image analysis software, specifically ImageJ, OpenCV, and MyPAR, and we'll discuss the pros and cons of each. We'll then take a deeper look at MyPAR specifically which is the software that I'll be using to demonstrate the lecture material. The first option we'll talk about for image processing software is ImageJ. ImageJ was actually developed by the National Institute of Health. So it's free, open source, and it can be extended with plugins. One plugin that I highly recommend for this course is MorphoLibJ. It contains a lot of the morphological image processing operations that you'll need in this course. Now some of the cons of ImageJ is that it's it has a tendency to crash sometimes especially with um, third-party community plugins or opening lots and lots of windows. So make sure you save your work as you're doing it. Uh, another big con of ImageJ is that image manipulation is destructive. So often the image inside the window itself is changed as you perform the operation. So if you want to be able to compare before and after for a step, if you want to save a particular image for use later, you have to duplicate the window first. And you can end up easily with five, 10, a dozen windows open all at once that you're having to juggle. So it gets pretty messy pretty quickly. And the final con of ImageJ is that it basically requires scripting. It requires learning the ImageJ macro language. So to save an algorithm, you'll either need to record a macro as you do it or script it. So for repeating simple operations or for a strictly linear image analysis workflow, you can get away with writing your steps down on paper as you figure them out and then just record them all at once. But for anything more complicated, you will need to go in and program the script. Next is OpenCV. OpenCV is an open source computer vision programming library. The first pro of OpenCV is that it's very powerful. The library contains almost any image processing function you could want. It's also free and open source. Now, some of the cons of OpenCV First, it's a programming library, not a program. So if you want to use it, you have to learn a programming language, um, C++, Python, Java, or any of the others. And as a programming library, it can be difficult to install, especially if you aren't used to building libraries from the source code. Now, if you happen to work in Python, then there's a package already made that you can just download, and that, that ends up being very easy. But in C++ especially, actually getting access to OpenCV is more difficult. Another downside of OpenCV is that the UI isn't optimized for image analysis. There basically is no UI in OpenCV. You simply use whatever development environment you have for your programming language. So here I'm using Spider, which is designed for Python, but it's designed for general Python programming. And so I have to open Windows myself and have them available to compare between different operations. It ends up being very similar to ImageJ, where you just have to manage everything yourself. The final thing to mention is that OpenCV has the highest learning curve of the three options. You have to learn the syntax of using all the functions. You have to learn how to handle two and three dimensional arrays in your programming language of choice. And it just takes a while to get up to speed on using OpenCV properly. The final option we'll talk about for image analysis software is MyPAR. Now on the pro side, MyPAR is about as powerful as OpenCV. There's many different image operations that you can perform from noise reduction to 
thresholding to morphological processing. There's also no need for coding or macro recording. Instead, you select your operation from the menu and it gets added to the recipe wherever you would like to insert it. And there's no need for juggling windows like you have to in ImageJ or OpenCV. You simply double click on the step and it gets displayed. And the segmentation is overlaid on top of the original. You can easily compare back and forth. It really is a nice graphical environment for performing an image analysis. And during the lesson, you won't have to be distracted by me dealing with a dozen duplicated windows or making typos while coding. Now, on the con side, it's not free, but there is a 30-day trial available that you can download at www.mypar.us. Now, let's begin our MyPAR walkthrough. We'll talk about the general layout of MyPAR and how you'll use the different applications to develop an algorithm, to take that algorithm and apply it to multiple images at once, and then we'll talk about some of the additional functionality that MyPAR has. When you open MyPAR, the five applications are across the top. The image processor is where recipes are developed and where they can be run on single images. The batch processor then takes this recipe and applies it to many images at once. The real-time processor is similar to the batch processor, except it watches a specific folder and applies the recipes to images as they're deposited into that folder. The post processor allows us to review the results of a batch or real-time process and perform any necessary manual cleaning, produce batch measurements, etc. Batches of images that represent slices through a 3D volume or through time can then be visualized and further processed in the 3D toolbox. Let's zoom into the image processor now. As I mentioned before, this is the place where you'll develop and edit your image analysis solution. Opening images in the image processor is almost trivial. Just drag them in. You can do the same with the recipe. The original or reference image lives here on the left while the current processed image lives on the right. We of course have the usual zoom and pan tools, as well as a number of tools up here that give you information about what's in your image. You can also calibrate the image so that MyPAR can work in physical units rather than in pixels. It'll even find your scale bars for you just like that. Okay. Let's turn to the recipe itself. As you develop your recipe in MyPAR, specific steps can be promoted to layers. Layers represent the final output of the recipe, telling the world what is what in the image. If there's too much information on screen, layers can be hidden, of course. You can also view all the layers at once, rather than just the current step. And you can perform measurements on all the layers at once, rather than just the current step. Say, for example, we don't want to have the area fraction of the ROI, of course 100%, that can be removed as well. And now we just find the area fraction of tertiary and secondary particles in this image relative to the region of interest. Navigating the recipe itself is fairly simple. Double click on a step to visualize its output in the current image. If you want to visualize one step while editing elsewhere, then don't double click. Just a single or right click will move the working step without changing which step is displayed. If you want to add 
at the beginning of a recipe without having MyPar rebuild the entire recipe every time you make a change, you can disable execution starting at any step that you'd like. You can then re-enable the rest of the recipe whenever you're ready. You can also drag, shift, and control click to delete several steps at once. Once the algorithm is developed and your layers are set, you can add or edit measurements from the menu bar here or from the shortcut bar. You can measure an entire layer or selection. You can measure each individual feature within a layer or each pixel within a layer. Measure features and measure local have the added functionality of being able to visualize your measurements color coding features and pixels accordingly. So here we have each pixel, each feature, excuse me, coded according to this color scale in histogram on the right. As we wind up our introduction to MyPAR, I want to just briefly introduce the batch and post processors. Once you have your recipe developed, you can apply it to a large number of images in the batch processor. Simply load them in, like so, and hit process. Now I recommend doing this during recipe development as well as after so you can check each chapter and make sure it works for all of your images before moving on to the next chapter. Layers and measurements are going to be stored in the selected location here. Once the recipe has finished running on all the images, you can load them in the post processor, either by hitting view results or by opening up the SSN file. Here in the post processor, you can perform manual cleaning if necessary and collect more measurements. The real time processor looks exactly like the batch processor, except instead of loading images, you load the folder to watch and it will execute the recipe on that folder. Finally, the 3D Toolbox allows you to visualize stacks of images and you can visualize a 3D reconstruction of the image stack. You can do lots of cleanup, rejecting features, pre-processing, some of the same steps that you could do in the image processor except on the stack or on the volume instead of just on the single image. Well, that's been our required materials and introduction to my PAR lecture. Next time, we'll begin learning about the anatomy of an image and how to not destroy your data with how you choose to capture it and how you choose to store it. So, thank you very much. We'll see you next time.